Welcome to Icarus Special Discussion Week 131. I'm here today with Carl, so I'm quickly gonna switch back to Discord. Hey Carl, how you doing? Good and you? Not bad, not bad. Another week for uh, Icarus, another update. Yeah, and another weekend, which is always welcome. So. Exactly. So, we're gonna have the new turrets today. It's uh, yeah, it looking they interesting. Won the poll. Yeah, by over 70%. So, this week we're introducing the winner of our first ever Discord poll the automated pistol turret. A nice defensive system, uh, an automated pistol in a turret. This new turret packs a wallop with a 400 round chamber. Nice. 120 degrees of horizontal rotation, 50 meter max range. Uh, the pitch is going to be 45 degrees, vertical rotation. So, let's have a quick look at the turret. This new automated defense system pistol is a powerful new turret system for you to deploy in defense of your base. Or in defense of a Gensam geezer or radar or whatever. It sports a 50 meter max range, 5 rotation degrees per second. We have to see uh, whether or not that's going to be enough. But that is pretty slow. That is pretty slow, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's five five degrees per second. Yeah, yeah. which means it'll take so quite a few seconds to rotate from right to left the whole 120 degrees. So, yeah, exactly. It's, like it's going to be like 60 60 seconds for a 120 degrees. No, no, that's no, 24 seconds. My, my mistake, 24 yeah. seconds. Yeah. 60 no, seconds still, would be a bit a long much. time. True, that's true, a long time. True, because that also means the tracking would probably not be that great. Because remember, animals are pretty quick, so unless the animal's running in a straight line towards, it could be interesting. Yeah, we will, uh, we will have to uh, see during oh, yeah. subsequent gameplay how. Useful, it uh, it, or how useful, how uh, whether or not this five degrees per second is going to be enough. Oh, well, that's the thing because remember this is the rotation, but it also depends on what the um, the uh, the attack cone is. Because realistically, yeah, the turret can move a little bit, but does it need to? Is it like exactly precise, or does it have like a five degree angle shooting? So if anything starting from point sort of going out, realistically, it wouldn't need to move if you're like. 50 meters out, moving slightly left, slightly right. It shouldn't need to realistically move, it should just lock on and shoot. Yeah, I it. assume it's gonna lock onto a target, keep shooting till it's killed, then go find Switch, another yeah. target. Yeah. But again, we'll have to wait and see. It has a two second cooldown between shots. That was the one question I had, yeah. So it fires a shot, waits two seconds, fires another shot. It's not too bad. Well, uh, again, we'll have to wait and see uh, whether that's, that's going to be enough to actually be useful. They mm. upped the damage for a pistol round to 150 last week, so hopefully this will be enough. Uh, it, it will fire fast enough to actually keep you safe. Or just no, make more turns. Well, it doesn't have the uh, crit stealth bonus most likely, or maybe it does, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, it can do crit shots though. As well, okay. Yeah. If it uh, hits the the weak point, usually the head of the animal. There's a 45 degrees vertical rotation pitch. Now, from what I understood from messages I saw on Discord, it's uh, from uh, level and then 45 degrees down. I'm not sure about the uh, up elevation, about the elevation. Elevation. Though. Yeah. Something we have to see, uh, especially uh, if that's to, if you wanted to track uh, and kill uh, dread wings, mm -hmm. which move fast and fly high. So again, we'll have to yep. see how useful those turrets were going to be against those. Unless it's just going to constantly shoot every two seconds, draining out the 400 bullets and not hitting well, anything. Well, it would still be 800 seconds. 
Yeah, it's, it's like uh, 13 minutes, constantly yeah. shooting. <laughs> mm. uh, 120 of degrees uh, of horizontal rotation. Uses a lot of power though. Consumes 3000 power while in action. And 1500 while sitting idle. <laughs> so do make sure <laughs> to keep it supported by a robust power network. So and power network most, with uh, a bunch of batteries. That's the most, uh, exp uh, most, the largest item with the highest draw that you could make. Is this close to the top, or what's? I think like this a, is pretty close mean? to the top. Yeah. yeah. Each. Each turret does consume mm. 3k power. Mm -hmm. So if your base, for example, would at least need nine, I would assume. If you're gonna I have my like... base built, my solo base built against a rock wall, so it would be five yeah, turrets. It's still three corners that you have to, three, three sides that you have to defend. Yeah. Unless you're going to primarily one, put it on. The one side a bit longer than the other, so five turrets. Yeah. Especially okay. with the 120 degrees horizontal. Mm. So it's not a full That's 180, a so there will be blind spots. Yeah, I probably could also make it i mean you probably have like brambles you could maybe also just cover certain areas of complete brambles and then just have you know the open areas where you usually travel just guarded by the turrets kind of thing as well yeah but yeah you can't put them too gators. high those turrets because they have 50 mm -hmm. meter range and 45 True. degree uh, pitch yeah. so if you yeah. place them too high and uh, and That's you like the 45 degree angle downwards if this this the distance where it would like be able to hit the ground is more than 50 meters away from the yeah, location yeah. of no. the turret then eh, not useful no you'll put it on top you'll, your 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 the open world that you have for example the the height of your fences is the standard height of the thing you'll probably just build some sort of pedestal for it put something underneath it like a chest or something and then you put the turret depending on how tall the, the turret doesn't look very tall or would you put it outside? No, you would want to. What you would want to put it on top of the fence, I think. Uh, it can't shoot straight down. Well, so once the once okay. the anyway, yeah, I have my my pen uh, extended to about the fence. So if I put mm. a concrete half uh, pieces around uh, and put my turrets on top of the concrete half pieces. There yeah. will be this area right uh, in front of the fence. That's the dead zone. But it should still be viable. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you would want to sort of. I don't know what you would want to do. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, yeah. let's carry on. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll check it in my uh, solo open world in a subsequent gameplay. Mm. I'll build a couple of them turrets. I do have some batteries in the base already, so not a 50 I have this in my actually... main world, open world, but I have some. This is where the actual testing would have been good to like stab you with a knife and then have the turret see where it can sort of aggro me and where it can't. Kind of thing. I'm not sure it's gonna. Blind spots. I'm not sure it's sure it's gonna uh, be able to attack players though. Uh, I have read okay. in previous patch notes something I believe uh, about a filter which you can set which animals it will shoot and which it will not shoot. But again, mm -hmm. we'll, we will test this. Now for these powerful defense systems, there's obviously a large cost to match. Uh, powerful is relative and large is relative as well. You will need 8 titanium plates, so that's 24 titanium ingots, more than a gun. Uh, 12 electronics, that's fine. 12 composites, not too bad. 12 aluminum plate, that's a new resource. I don't recall having seen those. The aluminum plate, yeah, I don't think that's on. There is the, titan the titanium plate, there is the mm -hmm. uh, platinum sheath. This is the first mm -hmm. time I see anything about aluminum plate, though. Well, we'll have to see. You will also need one pistol, 20 steel screws, and 12 copper wire. Because this is basically a pistol in a turret. Hence the need for the pistol. Now this new uh, pistol turret is your all-arounder defense system that fires a steady stream of pistol rounds. 
held by his massive 400 round capacity. Yes, that is massive. There will be a couple of lights on the turret. The lights on the bottom of the turret indicate its ammo and targeting status. Red reflects a turret that is out of ammo. Blue if it's stocked with ammo. And yellow orange if it's honing in and firing on a target. So blue means I have ammo but there's nothing for me to shoot at. The yellow slash orange is like hey I'm gonna shoot a target or I am shooting a target. And if it's red it's like yeah I don't have no ammo so I'm not gonna fire anymore. Now additionally there are lights on the side of the turret to give you a visual cue of the turret's ammo supply. High ammo counts shine a vibrant green light, reducing in brightness as the turret burns through its clip before transitioning to orange and then red as it gets critically low. Once it hits full red it means you are entirely out of ammo and need to resupply. Uh, here might come in handy the talent for uh, cheaper ammo crafting. Yep. I'm not a, you also have the option of crafting uh, another item. And I'm not so sure. I'm not sure that is, uh, whether or not there's a separate talent for a specific cheaper uh, pistol ammo crafting. Mm, no, um, I think it's just bullet crafting in general. I think, if I remember correctly. On my but solo on. character from a solo open world, I have talents for cheaper ammo crafting. Uh, so yeah, I'll see whether or not it also applies for a uh, pistol. Uh, next, mineable rocks optimization setting. Continuing our work on late game hitching, we're introducing some new fixes, changes and settings that allow more control for players. But before we get into it, here's a quick reminder of how the mineable rock voxels in Icarus work. So basically a stone that has not been mined is a single mesh, a simple object. While a partially mined stone can be composed of multiple meshes. Basically every uh, pickaxe hit is being registered and stored. Now the larger the stone, the more meshes required, because you can hit it more often. Large stone voxels tend to be placed in a world with roughly 30% of the stone's entire volume underground. Okay, that's new for me. So they blend in naturally with the landscape. For some of them, yeah, they you, you see this little bit sticking out of the ground, but other uh, large rocks are like, looks like they're fully on top of the ground, but okay. Now this does mean, however, that multiple meshes are left behind when all the visible stone has been mined, leaving a substantial amount of these meshes across open world prospects which have been active for some time. And because you can't reach them, you can't mine them, so they have to be calculated each time the map section loads in. Now, information about these mined meshes has to be communicated from the server to the client, and then streamed in for each player as they move around the world, and new landscape tiles are loaded in. Each of these is another multiplier to the strain on the CPU and GPU created by the ever-expanding number of unmined meshes. Hence, the longer you play on an open world and the more stone you mine, the worse it gets. Now, With that in mind, the changes this week are focused on limiting this impact by giving players more control over how stone voxels are loaded in their prospects. A new option has been added to the settings menu that will reload all stone voxels to an unmined single mesh state on persistent prospects, i.e. open worlds, during load. Basically all pros... Uh, not sure about uh, missions though. Would be handy for the longer missions, but definitely for prospects. Well, well the mission, uh, to be honest, uh, you would just usually at that point is finish your mission and get off world. That's my opinion. It wouldn't really be necessary to add it there, but it is the same yep. trigger and some calculations. So yep. theoretically, it wouldn't be that big of a difference, I think. Indeed, if you uh, use missions for a semi-permanent uh, uh, 
or semi-persistent uh, base, you're better off with an open world, true. Now, this method has restriction of only, only automating this reloaded state if there are no buildings or deployables in the immediate area. Makes sense. You don't want a yeah. uh, rock popping up in the middle of your base all of a sudden. True. Now, this setting will also be enabled by default, like the setting for the uh, Folius respawn. Folius respawn, by the way, also does include small trees. Not big trees, but small trees. Uh, the setting for the stones can be found as follows. For host and local players, you go to the settings menu, then gameplay options, and there is the large stones uh, respawn option. For dedicated servers, in the server settings.ini, you need to add a line with large stones respawn is true. And then next week, we get the runner-up from the poll, the Chuck Pistol. Next week we'll be introducing the runner-up in our Discord poll, the Chuck Pistol. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for voting in our first ever poll of this kind. So yeah, they were both close to completion and they just uh, moved the pistol yep. to next week. So I'm going to be uh, allowing them to uh, use more time for uh, for other things for uh, next updates. Yeah, slowly introducing features basically. Yep. Fine. This is absolutely fine and allowing them time to uh, Allowing them to spend time on the uh, next DLC, which I assume is going to open up the southern half of uh, Prometheus. We have been teased quite a lot about it already, so <laughs> I want that DLC. Give it! It's just... Uh... It's, uh, when did they provide a release date officially? I'm not even nope. sure. Not even no. There's no news about when it's going to be released yet. Okay. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm so going to want that one. I'm yeah. not sure whether I'm going to make a new character for that next DLC or if we see it as an expansion of Prometheus, thus use the Prometheus characters, but... On one hand, I'm like, yeah, if we look at this uh, as an expansion of Prometheus, thus I use the current Prometheus characters. They are max level already, so uh, less of a challenge. So I might actually go for uh, yet another character for the next DLC. And just to give it a bit more challenge, because you start with zero again. Yeah. I don't know if that's the way it would have been intended to be played, but it would, like you said, add more uh, challenge. That's all to the player's discretion, hey? True, no it is, but... And yes, it's a, it would be way easier to go in with a max level character fully equipped with all the space stuff and everything. But that's obviously not the point. But then there's no challenge no more. Mm. So... Now, your support makes these updates possible. All these updates, weekly updates, uh, they do need the support from the community, obviously. One way to show your support is to buy some of the DLCs. For example, the uh, Pets Bundle, which gives you the Creature Comfort Pack. With uh, nice extra troughs and saddles. The Pet Companions Pack, which gives you extra pets, extra cats and dogs which also includes the Zebra Rescue Mission. The only way to actually uh, obtain Zebras to ride. Or you could go for the uh, completer set, which checks like which DLCs, do, uh, which, uh, yeah, DLCs don't you have yet. And it makes a bundle of, ev of everything you don't yet have and uh, makes your entire set complete. Currently 20% off for the Pets Bundle, 15% off for the complete set. This does include the base game, uh, the Sticks and Prometheus DLCs, which is extra content. 
also gets you the outposts which is an, uh, basically Icarus Light uh, but also all other DLCs like uh, furniture packs uh, the uh, item from the pets bundle it's, it's just some extra not all of it is uh, like m most of it is, uh, most of it is just uh, fizzle the decoration spec, I believe it is, is the one which gives you the uh, geode lamps, which are actually functional. The rest is more like uh, just visual. So you don't need to buy it to play it. But it gives it a little bit of extra and you support the team. Anyway, let's see what's new this week. Not a whole lot. Basically the turrets. And some extra trophies for the Leica dog. Mr. Brown's of false. Okay, there's something we don't see. Although, the unlimited power thingy. <laughs> mm. uh, which makes me wonder were the developers testing on, uh, on a branch where. Everyone has unlimited power, so no need for uh, power generation. But yeah, that would be way too easy, you know, if that were true. Um, yeah, I mean, it would be kind of defeating the point of, you know, have, I mean, it's maybe, yep. maybe you'll defeat reducing. the point of the um, weather damage to the uh, wind turbines. Yeah, the fact I that water know. wheels it's are clogging up, the batteries, no, the all the thing. stuff. Yeah. Just difficult thing, for example, where it's like, yeah, it will just, you know, it will take a tenth of the cost. So it might not be considered unlimited power, but if it's reduced the cost of it, then yeah. you still need to build something to generate. But then it's only like, okay, one generator will power 20,000 machine guns. Then it's like, yeah, well. Well, it's, it's easier really for them like, to right? test, I agree. Yeah, and yeah, that's probably their stuff then. For testing purposes, I can understand. Let's see what have they fixed. Yeah. Fix an intermittent issue with unmineable voxels on clients. Where a voxel has been marked no longer net relevant on a client resume. This ties in with the fixed tri-state ambiguity with voxels being unmined, partially mined or fully mined. And this is the issue where uh, which we have seen in the uh, in the Monday evening uh, stream as well where foxholes all of a sudden uh, reappeared but you couldn't mine them uh, all the uh, all the uh, nodes on the ground out in the open uh, we managed to fix it by running a thumper once and then this fixed those foxholes but yeah uh, it wouldn't mean you need to run thumper across the entire map so it's a good thing that, that they are fixing it proper. They improved the yeah. skinning on the ghillie suit yeah. chest piece a little bit to remove stretching while aiming. And also remove the flyaway grass strands from the ghillie headpiece. But yeah, you were wanted to say something? Yeah, because uh, they're talking about the skinning, but obviously the, the, that means rendering all the, yeah. the, the generation thereof. But you encountered the same issue, well, an issue last week when you were petting the dog whilst having a shotgun <laughs> in your hand, where it yep. obviously looked quite interesting. So uh, did you support so, submit a report or both? Uh, actually, I did not. It's not only with petting, though. It's the same if you wave. And the same oh, if, yeah. if you right. wave so with a bow in your hand, it looks like yeah. you're playing a violin, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you wave with the yep. shotgun in your I hand, know, it goes through time. your hand. So you wave with the shotgun sticking mm. through your hand. Very, very funny. Got it. Uh, it's really it's not really, uh, not really an issue. It's uh, like okay, me. But true, true for immersion. Uh, well, it's just uh, you just have to, you know, when you start the animation, just don't render anything. In the, the player's hand, just be uh, careful. Also, it might be a good idea to get rid of stuck, you know, items like the head of the shield. 
then just kind of, you know, if you then emote it, just reset, and then kind of, then it might have like unstuck the item rather than having well, the whole session bugged kind of thing. It would be a good idea to sort of reset it as well. But yeah, then, so you have, for example, a pickaxe in your hand, and then you wave, yeah. it would then and unequip the pickaxe, the wave, and equip it back again? No. No, no, not unequip it. Just don't, like, yeah, so, sort of, you know, well, actually, it'll be interesting because, yeah, I would sort of then put it back to where the, well, actually, the, the pickaxe doesn't, does pickaxe. the pickaxe hang from your hip if you... Uh, if, if it's you're running out of the pickaxe, it's in your hand. It's right? in your hand, yeah. Like the torch. The torch, the pickaxe, so the, the axe. Basically, everything you have in your hand, it shows in third-person view. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, visually speaking, it would unequip it, and then you would do your action, and then when the action finishes, it would sort of reset back to what it was sort of prior to it. But it wouldn't unequip, unequip the item. So. Yes. Reset and equip. It's just a visual, a visual reset of the thing because there's been an instance in the past where either the pickaxe has gotten stuck, or the gun has gotten stuck, or the bow has gotten stuck, or the shield no, it's has it's gotten stuck visually. Only so. the, only the, the, the shield, as far as I know. No, even, no, 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 the bow as well. Where you were like, if if you like right click the bow, that it would be in a stuck, pre pulled angle, and then I was like, oh, I couldn't. You know, it would like you would then just sort of mouse wheel up and down to like unequip and re-equip it, and then it would solve the issue. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, it wouldn't solve one it. It would but not solve that issue that. for the shield. The shield was a whole different, <laughs> whole different problem. No, of course, but exactly. But it's mostly about the point of just reset. Well, I mean, it's a small thing. It's just if you wanted to fix the problem, you need to just because the issue will happen with torches. The issue will happen with anything. Because you're waving and it doesn't reset or doesn't, it basically keeps it attached, which makes it funny. But yeah. well, you can uh, shot in your hand. if you have a torch in your hand and you wave, you could say like, "Hey, I'm giving signals to someone far away, yeah. light signals." Uh, take a gun. Well, that sends a signal. <sighs> yeah, like, "Hey, don't come too close, on my, uh, or otherwise I'm gonna shoot you." That's a signal it says. Uh, Sense. Sometimes shooting first. Uh, Shoot first, ask then. questions later. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I know. Anyway. Uh, updated recipes to support butchery benches. Butchery benches which are not in the game yet. Okay. But uh, I think they're going to be closed then if they're now already update the recipes uh, for them. Yeah. I wonder what we will see about this. Will we even notice this until butchery benches are in? I don't know. Mm. No, it does. It says it's fixed. So, but, but they said that they had sort of future stuff also there. So yeah, yeah. It could be future stuff. Something they're testing in their own branches, and they run into yeah. an issue which has to be fixed. So. Yeah. Anyway. Future content, not a whole lot, eh? So many changes. Yeah, that's to actually the a good thing. That's one of the shortest. I know. One of the shortest, probably. Fix and increase the check pistol crafting cost, uh, cost and added text for it. Yeah, increase well, we already know it's going to be. Uh, crafting cost. What was the cost? It's future content, future. so it doesn't state. Oh, well. This is the oh, workshop uh, item, so yeah, they yeah. had some cost. 500 rand, 500 rand. I don't know. Exotics. exotics. I assume it's going to be exotics as well. Yeah. So, yeah, add a text with a pistol and. But yeah, all you need to do is uh, log into my open world once and you'll have a couple of thousand purple and red exotics, you know. Yeah, that's uh, also true. Probably one of the. Actually, what I'll probably try and do is. Because um, uh, Echo has joined. It's been some time since I've joined your world. When last did Echo join your stream? Uh, quite a while ago as well, actually. Because, yeah, I mean, we, we saw that but on his stream when she joined last time. We were like, how, many, how much did she get? Was it like 1,000 or 12,000? It was a big number. Of, <laughs> big like, number. 
at least at one. least four digits i know yeah it was four digits at the very least uh, so uh, but yeah but anyway that's it so you're gonna get and into some your... one, something echo is gonna be slightly less happy about and mm. spider loot best year oh, no. experience in this combat stats don't so tell me echo has an arachnophobia she has oh no so we are gonna get with mouses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you stories about mice. Yeah. But yeah, spiders. So the um, initially they said yeah they're gonna be spiders on uh, Prometheus and then along came the uh, the what's we call it the uh, lava broodlings, but they only had four mm -hmm. legs, so they were okay for Echo. But now they're talking about spiders again. I hope we now get like proper spiders. Yeah, I, the broodlings do disturb me out of the most out of all the sort of things. To be nah, honest. they're just annoying. No, they are. I mean, they're luckily not tough, but you know, uh, spiders themselves shouldn't be an issue. But I think there has been a little bit of a, you know, because you, you, you get the aggro music, right? So you don't really get a surprise when something is actually gnawing at you from back, from behind, basically. Hmm. So Unless you're fighting the one and another one uh, comes in from behind. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, but that's the thing. But it's more like the effect of, yeah, you go into a cave and you're looking around left and right. And as you're mis mining a thing, the spider comes from the ceiling and just sort of decides to start having a, a meal, basically. But, yeah, I wonder, will they start shooting webs which slow you down? Probably, yeah, I'm guessing. Which, yeah, isn't... Well, what, 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 the, in the ice caves, uh, in the Arctic, right? Uh -huh. It sort of felt like, you know, that it would be a very... I mean, imagine going into, like, a cave and then it just being, in like, completely snow white because of spider webs and stuff. Hmm. <laughs> I think Echo would laugh there. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd definitely be laughing. Yeah, I'd I I bring her look to the cave and be like, nope, 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 yeah. nope. I'll, nope, I'll nope, let her nope. go in first and then stay nope. back I'm and laugh as she sure starts screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure if there's like spider webs or something inside there, it would be like. I imagine if it was a delayed render, so she would walk into the cave. And and she would be like halfway in, and then suddenly there would just be spider webs everywhere. Uh, that would actually probably be a little bit terrifying for that people. I mean, we shouldn't make yep. fun of people that actually have a phobia. But I can true, true, but I will be laughing. Oh yeah, because imagine you're in the cave, you're just, you've got a thing, and then suddenly you get a little bit of a lag spike, and then suddenly it's just covered in spider webs, and then you turn around, and there's just like three spiders over there. I think there will be panic. Uh, I can tell you, yeah. she will be screaming panicking. And panic. yeah. Oh, yeah, panic and screaming, pretty much. <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, time to build some turrets then, I presume. Yep, yep, yep. First, gonna have a break or? Uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a quick break. Uh, just uh, keep on hanging in uh, for a bit if you want, yeah. Whilst I do my stream, yeah, I'm just gonna have some coffee. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll go do that as well. All right. So, yeah, those were the patch notes. Quick one this time. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back in, uh, I don't know, like 10 ish minutes. And we'll do some subsequent, subsequent gameplay. We're going to make some nice turrets, uh, craft a whole bunch of ammo. Uh, so it's a good thing actually I did uh, add extra water wheels yesterday because I now I'm gonna need a power. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed you enjoyed watching this uh, personal updates. We do it every week, every Friday night, 21:30 British time. Uh, always followed by subsequent gameplay. Uh, so yeah. If you did uh, enjoy watching it, a like would be appreciated. If you want to get notified next time I stream on Twitch, there's a follow button. Or if you watch this on YouTube uh, and you want to get notified next time I upload, there's the subscribe button. Don't forget to, always hit the to also hit the notification button because YouTube doesn't always notify you proper. Other than that, uh, thanks for being here and I hope I'll see you 
in the Surfgun gameplay stream.